Hi, and welcome to City Desk, a behind the scenes look at Santa Barbara's top local news stories. I'm your host, Jerry Roberts, joined by an all-star lineup of local journalists. In tonight's special edition, our last of the season and last of the year, we'll take a look at the most important, interesting, and entertaining stories of 2015, along with the top newsmakers, and then take a look ahead at what will be banking news in 2016. Joining me to talk about it all, environmental reporter Melinda Burns, Nick Welsh, executive editor of the Santa Barbara Independent, Kelsey Brueger, staff writer for the Independent, and Josh Molina, who covers politics for NewsHawk. Thank you all for coming. All right, Josh, 2015, what's the biggest story in Santa Barbara? Well, once again, the San Francisco Giants did not win the World Series, <laughs> so... Um, How did the Dodgers do? I mean, yeah. Well, they won more games, and they made it... Uh, yeah, and they're farther. still not on television, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um, well, next year's an even year, okay, so you have okay, something right. like What's the story of the year, Josh? Well, <laughs> um, you know, obviously the biggest stories of the year are, uh, you know, the oil spill was... Um, the biggest story of the year, widespread impact. Uh, the drought is a big story of the year, um, and I think that you know the drought has been going on. It's not going to it's not going to end anytime soon. But I, I think the biggest sort of conversational story that is going to affect the city of Santa Barbara long term is the district elections and how fast we saw that <coughs> happen. And uh, we had we had an election already this year, and we had uh, somebody come out of nowhere to to win a seat on the city council, and we don't really know how that's going to play out going forward, but we do have another Latino representative on the city council, which was one of the goals of district elections. Two for the very first time. Two for the very first time. Kathy Maria was, was reelected. And uh, this, is a, this is a big change. You know, it's not going to come overnight, but we're going to start to see uh, neighborhoods represented because it's, it's uh, you know, done by district. And we're going to start to see if this is a good thing or a bad thing. And uh, this year was, uh, we had lots of Latino candidates running, more than ever before, and uh, we have you know, a new makeup of the council. Yeah, so all right. Well, that's not bad. You, that's <laughs> yeah. not, you, don't, you don't agree with that, though, do you? Um, I'm it, guessing. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. No, I think, um, yeah, no, like you mentioned, I mean, um, the, the drought, oil spill are um, obviously big for Santa Barbara, and um, and, and larger in scope. Um, what I was going to bring up was um, Sheriff Phil Brown's North County Jail Project, which in a lot of ways doesn't impact people unless you have been in jail or know someone who has been in jail, um, but at the same time has... Or pay taxes. Right? Well, right, and, and, and so when you start looking at it more closely, I mean, it's a huge project um, um, for the county, and it's something that has come up countless times it's been the most contentious, um, one of the most contentious things at the Board of Supervisors this year, several hearings, I think nine hearings since 2013. Um, so. And it was off again and now it's yeah. back on again? Well, it's still happening, but what was off was uh, a wing of the jail, um, which was called the Star Complex, so a treatment re-entry center, which was 228 beds. Um, that was voted down um, in November and then three weeks later um, snuck back on to the agenda and the supervisors actually, um, for the most part, um, changed their vote and are going to look at bringing it back. I don't know if how possible that's going to be able to do. And what's, a, what's the price tag for the jail again? Total for the entire jail is going to be about $100 million. $100 million. So why do you think Bill Brown, who is like the most talented, one of the most talented sheriffs we've had politically, pissed off all the supervisors so bad? What happened? Well, I think, I mean, I think maybe maybe he got ahead of himself. Maybe he thought, um, who wouldn't be supportive of this? He, he, he's been the first sheriff in decades to be able to get this grant from the state. It's 90% um, paid for. Um, you know, he should be, he should be a hero. Um, he was expecting them to just maybe rubber stamp everything he brought to them, and they were not in planning on doing that. Melinda, what's the biggest story of the year? Well, I think the moves toward self-governance in Isla Vista is pretty big. Uh, it's, it's a, it hasn't um, gelled yet, but every week since last December, so for, for a whole year, the activists out there have been meeting to talk about how they want to set up a governing body for Isla Vista. And AB3, uh, Doss Williams' legislation, was approved by the governor, and it will put 
on the ballot next November, uh, a basically a new tax for Isla Vista, and it will have um, an advisory board uh, made up of five elected um, residents of Isla Vista, and for the first time, really, the county and the um, university will will be on that board. They will be and, at the table. And if I don't live in Isla Vista or party in Isla Vista, which Nick does regularly, why, why do I care? Well, I think um, taxpayers are subsidizing Isla Vista to the tune of about $8 million uh, a year. And this, this new tax isn't going to uh, directly make a dent in that. There, there's a huge backlog in something like $5 million in infrastructure improvements that need to be made out there. It, it, the tax will be used for new things, but at least they'll start talking, at least they'll start sort of apportioning the money that's, um, that's out there and in a, in a very concerted way. And I just think uh, it's really been democracy in action. Mary, I hesitate to ask you what the biggest story is because I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure you're gonna say the sea lions. Uh, yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. The What's sea lions are a subsection. No, um, the biggest story I would say is weather weirdness, which encompasses the drought, the El Nino that we're about to have. But let's start with, just start with the drought. Uh, we just got through four of the hottest, driest consecutive years in the history of history. Uh, and Lake Kachuma just got a lot smaller. Um, we, we have uh, just for the last 50 years, we've assumed there's enough water in Lake Kachuma to get us through seven years. And if it doesn't rain, we can get through seven years. Well, guess what? It's now like half that, so it's about four years. So all of a sudden, all the water agencies that draw from Lake Kachuma are gonna have to do, make do with a whole lot less. So what we have on the table in the city of Santa Barbara is a $55 million desal plant. Now, the last drought we had, I think we spent 25 million, something like that, on the desal plant, and then we had the Miracle March rains. So here we are, we got 55 million on the table, and can't get it back. And we all ha we have El Nino uh, predicted, and the big high pressure system, which has been blocking the rains, seems to have miraculously dissipated. So we probably are gonna have some serious rain. And what's the high in Lompo for tomorrow? High in Lompo will be 78 <laughs> and a dew point of 42. Right. But Quick. It's the sea lions. Quick. The sea lions <laughs> and have all been chased north, all and right. they're all dying. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, you're all wrong. Uh, biggest story of the year beside the pipeline is, is the resignation or the retirement of Lois Capps. Yeah, she's a quitter. <laughs> she's a quitter. She's not retiring, she's no, quitting. that's Lori Gass. No, she's retiring. All right. Come on, now why is that a story? What? Come huh? on. Look, look, she's stepping down after 18 years. A liberal Democrat, she's being... She's the top uh, political figure in, in, in the region. She is the direct pipeline to all the money that we're going to get if you in don't, Washington. If you don't live in the, 30, in, the, in the district, why do you care? All of our viewers, what are you talking about, live in the district? All right, who's the biggest newsmaker of, of 2015? Um, well, I am maybe again going to go out on a limb, but it's say Janet Wolf. Um, she's the chair of the Board of Supervisors. Um, we haven't really talked about the oil spill. That's, of course, um, one of the biggest stories in Santa Barbara um, of the year, and, and she was front and center. Um, she made it really clear that she was unhappy that the county didn't have as much of a voice as um, many people thought that it should have at the table um, when, the, when the feds came in. Um, uh, the Coast Guard and, and EPA to kind of take over um, uh, the, the cleanup, the official response process. She was sort of famous for um, trying to get into the um, emergency or the, um, the EOC, the Emergency Operations Center. Right? Is that right? That's right. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Um, and being stopped by a plane's um, security guard. Now, didn't and these guys drive around in black SUVs with tinted yes. windows? And they kept all the reporters out, too, except they, for yourself. Right. Well, I just muscled my way right in, yeah. Josh, biggest newsmaker. Um, I'd, I'd probably have to say Jason Dominguez to stick with my district elections theme. Uh, he surprised a lot of people. People didn't think he was going to win. There were other people who were um, plaintiffs in the district election contest who were running for that seat. And uh, he comes out of nowhere. He was shunned by the Democratic Party, by the Democrats. and. 
he didn't sulk about it. He decided, I'm going to go court the moderates and the conservatives, and I'm going to go win a seat on the council. And, and he did it. And so he's, uh, when people look back at, at elections in and, and, and Santa Barbara, they're going to say Jason Dominguez got, got elected somehow this year, and nobody could have predicted that. You know what else they're going to say? They're going to say that that he completely flaked on coming to City Desk <laughs> Newsmakers for his interview, and that'll I think that'll be that's going to be his legacy. long remembered as well. Uh, Day of Melinda, who's uh, the biggest newsmaker? Well, I think here. that um, for my money, it's State Senator Hannah Beth Jackson who passes the uh, nation's most stringent equal pay for equal work law and makes it possible. Uh, for women to um, demand equal pay more easily at work without being retaliated against, they can ask how much their male colleagues are, are making. Um, and uh, I think it makes it easier to sue an employer for. Yeah, and she got a lot of other stuff that she got passed. Yes, she? And she's the she head had of the, the Women's Caucus, and, and, and I think that's. She really passed a couple of measures on pipelines yeah. uh, that make inspection state inspections of pipelines more frequent right. that's a good pick who do you the guy with the sea lions right no actually i'm gonna go with the guy who uh sued you no um barry capello attorney barry capello and leo martinez um and these two uh brought us district elections district elections didn't happen because of any great groundswell of popular uprising and discontent it was Barry Capello, the, the legal barracuda, barracuda of Santa Barbara, who scared the city uh, into uh, putting district elections on the ballot. And the only reason he did that is because he was good buddies with Leo Martinez, who was a city council member back in the 70s, who, ironically, Barry tried to keep off the ballot because he hadn't been in town long enough. Um, and despite this beginning, they became, it was like one of the great long distance bromances of all time. And so, Leo lives in New Mexico, Barry's here, long distance romance, and Leo calls up Barry and says, let's sue those bastards. And that's the rest and of history. And he got a bunch of money, didn't he? Oh, yeah. He but occasionally does He got that. seven, look, as, uh, there's the 11th commandment, which is Barry Capello will be paid. But I don't think he did it for the money. Everybody says 750,000 bucks. But Barry, I don't think that's a big deal. Couch change. That's, that's yeah, Couch socks, socks drawer. All right, did he ever get his money from the news press, by the way? Don't we know. We don't know. That was kind of, that was sort of, uh, well, we don't know what it is. We'll find that out. All right. Uh, once again, you're all wrong. Um, September September 16th, there was a, a fire that broke out up above uh, Westmont, and it was immediately trampled out with a great strategy and stuff. So the, the newsmaker of the year is Pat McElroy, fire chief of Santa Barbara. He kept us safe. I thought you were going to say Willie Chamberlain, because if it wasn't for Willie Chamberlain, we wouldn't have the planes to put it out. No, I, I wasn't going to say that. Come on. All right, below the radar story. What stories did not get covered enough or did not sort of rise to, to high public consciousness such as these others? Nick. Well, I would say the looming merger between Cottage Hospital and Sansom uh, Ooh, Foundation a is a big one. I think it's interesting that the same federal agency which is giving this the tidy whitey seal of approval, the Federal Trade Commission, is the same one that said, yeah, um, Safeway and Albertsons can merge and we'll have this scrawny little outfit out of the Pacific Northwest called Hagen's come in and take over. And we saw Hagen's, they lasted what, six months, five, five yes. months before they declared bankruptcy. Um, and, you know, they come into town, they, they fire the, uh, you know, the uh, development and disabled who are working there. Um, and now the stores are empty. And now the stores are empty. They had some good bargains the last couple of weeks. Did you go in there before? Yeah. Yeah. Would you buy anything? No. 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 That's a good, that's, that's, that's a very good one. What do you think was undercover or below the radar? Um, I'm going to go ahead and say when uh, the news press put uh, illegal in their headline, um, it was, I think, uh, very early in 2015, and then they, they did it a couple of times. Um, illegal alien. Ill illegal alien. I think that was in the... In the, in the lead, maybe. Um, but that um, turned into a protest. It sounded like they had quite a few people coming up from um, Southern California to, to, to join um, on, on their side, and, and it was met the with. Minutemen, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Is that the official title? 
Um, and uh, so, yeah. Yeah, with uh, especially with the way uh, immigration is. Right, right, just huge. With, with that being a, a major topic. National issue. You agree with that? Well, I think we've got a major fight brewing, and it hasn't played out yet on Milpa Street um, between um, oh, dueling yeah. associations uh, representing the businesses uh, on the street. We have an all or, or mostly Latino association that popped up after um, larger businesses on so sort of mom, moms and pops after the larger businesses um, collected enough signatures basically to form a, an association and pay dues. Um, so this has all been postponed for the new council recognizing and that the new And the new council member whose that's district right. that is. Yeah. Okay. So it's sort of the uh, new Latino community against the old Latino community, how, do you, how, how would you frame that? Um, I, would, I would see it more as a question of size. Um, larger businesses versus small moms and pops that have been there for a long time yeah. and have traditionally had their own association. Uh, they used to run the parade. Um, so I think the, 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 the newer group, uh, which is... Um, I, I think it's 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 larger businesses. Um, That's a good one. What do you think was below the radar that well, I, I, deserve more attention? This is I think the for affordable housing issue uh, pops up in, in in high profile ways, whether it's vacation rentals or the average unit density uh, program. This story of the lack of affordable housing, uh, rental vacancies at, at zero. That's a big story that everybody just you know becomes kind of complacent about unless it pops up in the form of a high-profile issue. But that story is not going away. Uh, we have high-density uh, rental apartments being built in Santa Barbara for the first time in a long time, and uh, that's that's a you know, that's a good thing. There's there's more uh, availability, but that also puts some strain and stress on established neighborhoods and. Uh, that's, that's a really important issue that doesn't get talked about a lot unless it, there's some huge explosion in front of the city council. How do you think that's going to play out with district elections when people want to have this high-density housing in a certain neighborhood without the parking and the neighbors all come out and say, oh, there's no parking? Um, how do you think the, the, the new district uh, council members are going to respond to that? Whatever group is the largest, whatever group's going to come out and vote, um, it's a challenge. It's one of the clash. The parking issue is a big deal that hasn't played out yet. So uh, these new units, there's one parking space per unit. Where they're going to park on the street, that's going to be an impact on the neighbors. Who's going to, you know, it just sort of depends individually. Uh, uh, Council Member Dominguez, Council Member Elect, he's going to have to deal with that in a big way yeah. because so many of the high, high density rental projects are on that side of town. Yeah. You know? Kelsey, you're our designated young person here. Mm -hmm. Don't you don't you agree that in in passing the most restrictive legislation against the sharing economy in the United States, the council on this Airbnb thing is standing in the way of history? Yes, I agree with that. No, I think it's interesting because I, you know, there's the argument that for young people, um, young people are often renters, and Airbnb is impacting the rental market. Um, but at the same time, um, it's, it's like Uber, you know, I mean, are you going to take a cab for the rest of your life or are you going to say, oh, Uber is actually really convenient and I can hop into it and, and it's, um, you know, on my phone and, um, all the information there and et cetera, et cetera, for so many reasons. Um, so, um, yes, I do think that Airbnb is sort of a, a tool of the future and, um, you know, Not saying, well, you know, I, I, you know, I, I think it's going to, this is just the beginning. I think the blowback, you can't take away so much money from so many people and not have blowback. You know, you know, have you heard but of who's the town for? Who's it for? It's already lost um, swaths of the, uh, of the middle class. And so... Are is we, there are any we evidence that... Is that it a tourist town? I mean, is that, I mean, it is a tourist town. Well, that's... 
Is that we're turning over street. our housing stock now? To turn well, it's interesting because on the tourist town, because you got the hotel guys are up in arms about. It. I mean, they really, they're they're mm -hmm. largely Take behind them, yeah. knocking down Air, Airbnb. But on the other hand, the real estate people are not happy about this because it's a it's a way to help sell sell homes. Yeah. It's a guaranteed revenue stream. So it's a challenge. We have all these tech companies that are making Galita of their home. Sonos is in town young professionals being recruited from all over the world and they're going to get creative and so it's an issue that going forward that isn't going to go away. Well, Kelsey's correct on this. They're 30, standing 000, in the way of history. 30,000 people commuting here. Well, and running and when, the town. Or, once again, yeah. you've all all missed the real below the radar side. What was that? The, the impact of Proposition 47. Oh, I was going to say that. Oh. Okay. You just wait until we're all done and you have your little. No, I have my list yeah. here. Yeah. And then I cheat. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Enough about 2015. We're going on to 2016. Uh, Melinda, what's going to be the biggest story of 2016? Listen to the rhythm of the falling rain. El Nino. Yeah, I think. Uh, you know, we have a, an El Nino at peak intensity right now in the Central Pacific. It's one of the three strongest El Nino patterns uh, since 1950. And depending, we, we could get a huge amount of water if, you know, if it plays out that way. We are going to get above average uh, rain. They've, they've acknowledged that. But what are, the, uh, what are the big years in the last century here? Uh, four times we had over 40 inches. So 1998, winter of 1997, 1998, we had 47 inches and average is 18. So, it, you know, it could be a very, very big year. So that kind of puts your lie, puts to the lie, your, your claim that the drought's going to continue to be the, the, the biggest story. I didn't say that. that. I didn't say that. <laughs> I, no, what I, do you I, think we're going to be the big million down it was to, to make El Nino happen. All right. But what's going to be the big story? Oh, biggest story, um, I think there's actually two. Um, pot and oh, yeah. pot, you got to get the pot, mm -hmm. and uh, the minimum wage being uh, jumped up mm -hmm. to 15 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. Both of those are going to be very lively. Um, November, we're going to have a statewide recreational pot legalized. Santa Barbara City is the only city in three counties that has three allocated, designated medical marijuana dispensaries approved. So what they're thinking behind the scenes at City Hall, we better get something on the ballot that says tax that. Mm -hmm. Because, and so they're talking maybe 15% gross revenues. So if they're gonna have a bunch of money, we're gonna get a big slice How of it. How much do they figure that's gonna be I have no idea. altogether? I have no idea. In, in oh, and then minimum wage. I mean, they're talking about um, moving that up to 15 bucks an hour. I mean, obviously, the rents uh, that people are paying, everybody is, the water level is this high economically. Um, back to the water again. Back to the water. <laughs> Can't stay away from it. Um, <laughs> but no, I think that's going to be what very do you mean interesting. The, 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 the the economic water level. Yeah, okay. is, what does that mean? What, what, what I mean is that the economic, uh, most people find themselves economically underwater. Mm -hmm. um, and for uh, people on the lower end, uh, uh, 15 bucks an hour will make a big difference. All right. What do you think? 2016? 2016, I think the third district race for county supervisor. Um, not to say county for every single item, but it, it will be significant because the, the, the third district is uh, the balance of power on the board. Um, it's been a liberal Democrat. Um, uh, for the Doreen past, Farr. Doreen Farr for the past two terms, and um, what's what's interesting about about this next um, race is so far two people have thrown their name in the hat in the ring, <laughs> um, and that's Joan Hartman and Bruce Porter, and um, so likely the election will be in June. Last time there were five people, and um, so uh, you know how many Isla Vista voters are going to turn out during finals week to vote? Who knows? But um, probably a lot less than are going to turn out. Um, so balance definitely, of balance of power will swing back to North County. Perhaps. <laughs> I'm not voting. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not predicting that. I'm just saying that. But it's going to be a lot more suspenseful. Yeah, I think. I mean, maybe. Yeah, I think. I mean, yeah. If if um, if Bruce Porter can, um, you know, get the Valley vote and and um, convince the people who do decide that they're going to vote instead of going to their final um, in Isla Vista. 
So and it's his but, claim to but, fame. But, new, but, but supervisor soon to be elect Doss Williams will be out there uh, organizing the troops. He'll be out there too, but because um, he doesn't want he doesn't want a, 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 a North County majority. Right, right, right. So that's true. All right. So you that's are predicting. Point. You are predicting. Predicting. What am I predicting again? <laughs> well, we'll come back and see how that works okay. out. Josh, what's the biggest story of twenty six? The Giants are only going to win sixty games. Oh, um, will you stop? No, I'm not. Um, I think you know the rain is the biggest going to be the biggest story of 2016. Uh, hopefully, we get a big you know 40 inches or whatever. If we don't, there's the desal plant, but it's certainly not going to solve the problems. But uh, you know the rain's a big big story, and who's going to replace uh, Lois Caps in Congress? Yeah, that's the biggest story of all. You you blundered into the truth, Josh. Then <laughs> I didn't need to at say least on City you. Desk, that will be the biggest story. <laughs> all right, we're out of time, uh, and so that's going to do it for this edition and this year of City Desk. Uh, we want to thank everybody for watching this year and let you know we'll be back in just a few weeks for the start of uh, our 2016 season. In the meantime, as you think about your year-end uh, nonprofit gift giving, please remember TVSB TV Santa Barbara, whose studio, small staff, and most of all its dedicated volunteers make it possible to bring you City Desk and other community programming. Check it out at tvsb.tv. Uh, and thanks tonight for, uh, to JP, Kirsten, Hunter, T, and John, Nick, Melinda, Josh, Kelsey. We'll see you in the new year as well. And thanks again for watching. Good night. <laughs>